Hey guys, um, okay, so this is the third session on building the LF1. Um, we're gonna just keep on detailing the geometry that we have uh, been working on. And you can see here, if we turn on JD mode, um, that we're having quite a precise uh, geometry right now. So let's go, uh, keep on building some of the some of this building, okay? Um, what we're gonna do now is just uh, bring back some of the the plants that we have uh, placed in the first floor, uh, and we're gonna just try to do this ramp section here, right? Um, so these two volumes are actually sitting perfectly together, um, and this is something that uh, could be slightly tricky. So we're going to be aware a few about a few things how to 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 actually not not get into kind of um, uh, details that might have some errors here. So let's go ahead and just turn on control points for this curve. This is a curve. Uh, it's very hard to see right now. So maybe we could change the color of this layer to something like red. Maybe that's a little bit better, right? So. What we're gonna do is just start drawing this curve here that goes all around it and then continues to this side, right? Um, so I'm gonna just do that with a curve, with this one here. And I'm gonna roughly uh, imitate the number of control points uh, just in case not to have uh, too many differences between the geometries eventually when I, when I love them. Um, so I'm going to just use some of those contour points, that's fine. So here we can actually use some more because we have more detail in the curvature. We can also go back to some of these points and just move them around. Um, so I, now I can press shift if you want, to just go straight. And then here we could just start going straight. Uh, and you see that it not necessarily goes straight because you know, this building could just be modeled slightly more in a more fluid way. Uh, if you want to just be very precise about this kind of orthogonal part of the building, uh, we can just type shift to click straight. And as much as this volume needs to end here, I'm just going to finish very similarly to where I left off the other curve around here. Right? So I have these two curves now. Both of them short of what they need to be for this volume. This is the one that belonged to this volume. That's why we did it so short, and that's fine. But we want to just keep on the, exactly the same curve and extend these curves in order to just use this for this other model. So in order not to change the position of any of these uh, points, we're going to uh, extend the curves, right? So let's go ahead and just draw a line somewhere around here. Doesn't matter really. Uh, we need plenty of space and it's better to have larger surfaces that we can afterwards trim um, than have very uh, or get short or need more surface to work with. So I'm just going to type extend, right? So you can see here the command extend and it asks us for the boundary to project to, right? So if this is kind of, if these lines are going to get extended, they're going to just get extended to it. Here, this is the boundary, right? So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select the curves to extend. Uh, so I'm going to click on this one and then that one. And that's fine. And I'm going to delete this uh, creation curve. So that looks pretty good. So if we go again into our 3D view, we can make these lines again, maybe some different color, some blue, maybe. Something visible. We are working with green, I think that is right. So um, for now, I think that we can actually hide the image. And what we need now is just to extrude both of these curves again. Let's see that they are continuous surface. We're going to do it 10 meters again. So we have an extrusion of these two curves, right? Uh, we will be duplicating 
to the surface of detail the volume for now uh, until we start kind of really dealing with interior and when we start kind of doing some some boolean some some extra trimming we'll just deal with this volume separately and then but the surfaces should be exactly the same based on the curve that we're using right so let's put this element which we haven't done already in the surface uh, layer and now what we're going to do is just go into the farm view here um, and the definition of the stair it's maybe very uh, it's not so clear uh, in this view the one we are using the section but it's eventually maybe more visible in this other one right so we're going to use this one as, an, uh, as a reference to actually draw it and then we'll just move it up right so what we're going to do is just do a curve and we're going to start here it needs to be a curve right because we want to do a continuous uh, curve in this case right so we're going to just go ahead and draw the silhouette of this stair here we could just go and get to this point i know that this is being kind of bent because of the scanning so i know that this is slightly longer if we check it with other plants we'll see that it's slightly longer um so for now i'm just going to maybe project it a little bit longer than what it shows to be here right so i'm going to like put it here somewhere there right so we have this line um let's close this one by snapping to it and then just move it making a line down so we have those two and then we're going to go ahead and just type also a straight line and in this case we're going to just make a straight line roughly in this direction like this so that's kind of more like you can always just get better plans and do it yourself uh, or so but i think that if you look at the images it's not exactly parallel to this one it needs to be slightly longer so i'm just going to make it quite projected like this right that's good and i'm also going to do this one in this case like that another straight line in this case somewhere here maybe let's close it here for now and then we will see if we can need to trim that further right so i have this line with this line uh, these two lines i want to just move like i can enter and i'm going to move them to my new wherever i decided uh, that this should go because I, 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 really, I thought it should be slightly longer than this image right so i'm not following completely the image here but it's completely up to you and in this case uh this became a little bit short so i can always do chamfer distance zero and zero and pick these two and just connect them together right now i'm going to join these curves and join these other curves as well so we have those three and j enter um, so i have join these three curves and join these three curves as well uh, now i'm just going to move these curves back to my uh, the section i'm working with right so i'm going to just type m enter and i'm going to use this reference of this kind of curve point that it seems to be quite particular right so again it's something that uh, uh, as we're following the plants from a raster image is not so precise uh, feel free to be more precise and use the measurement if you have them in this case i think we're working quite roughly in a way uh, just to show modeling tools and and, and and techniques to actually develop design as well by thinking of these volumes and in a way the strategy that this building has to actually uh, describe some of the detail so in this case if we go into a 3d view we realize that we produce this line and this line right like completely flat and we have these two surfaces right so what we're going to do is just pick those two surfaces and then pick i think that we're missing one line here let's check
Right. So this curve and this curve. Okay, great. Those are the two curves that we want to work with, and then these two surfaces, and we're going to isolate them by typing I enter, H enter, or if you don't have the shortcuts that we talked about last session, we could do invert selection, hide. So we have those two elements isolated, right? So that makes it really easy for us to work with them. Uh, we can go ahead and just hide the image. Uh, so the operators are very clear. We're going to trim these surfaces, selling cutting objects. We're going to use this line. First, this one, right click. Let's trim the first surface and the second one by clicking on both of them. Right click to end tool. Right click again to repeat the trimming operation. In this case, this uh, curve as a cutting object. Right click this element. And that element. And escape to finish. So let's go ahead and see what we just produced. We produce this kind of um, ramp, right? Uh, like getting from here. So if we type now show, we can show all the geometry. And you can see that this is sitting exactly in the same plane in which these other surfaces work. That's really good. Um, what we're going to do now is just go ahead and maybe surface loft. And I'm going to select some of these edges. And I'm going to do it in this layer. So right click to loft again. Selecting the edges. Click OK. We don't really need this one, but in a way, it just starts seeing some of the volume. Uh, I'm not going to do that one for now. I'm going to do this one. Oops. This is why it's always good to isolate some of this stuff. We can do this interior as well. But that will change. I mean, we will have to just go in there and see what is the details of the geometry that we're dealing with. But for now, it's good to have kind of a solid approach. Um, and then further detail in some of the content, right? In this case, uh, if we see some of the images, this ramp is actually starting from the ground. So we're going to just click on this roof and say M enter, D enter by moving it vertical, so vertical active, and moving it down. So this looks more like how this building has been developed. This will be the edge of the next volume. So we're not just going to offset or, or produce some um, some thickness here yet. We're going to work with this element. The last thing that we're going to do to this element right here is just do the stair element, replace this one basically with the stairs. right? So let's go ahead, move into our uh, field lines layer, and we can just Maybe turn on show background. So you can see that the stairs here, we have a reference of what is the landing here, and they should reach somewhere here. So we can follow some of the, um, the rules for stairs as opposed to just refollowing some of the uh, options that Saha had did like, in a way. So let's do, let's say, 0 0.17. Right, I'm not going to do these lines like this. Right, so I can actually trim now based on this diagonal. Let's do that again. Trim. Apparent intersections, I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to use this curve as a trimming object. Right click. There we go. So we have this element. That follows, if we replicate, replicate this element uh, along this kind of curve, it will follow the, the curvature that we have, right? Um, but nothing guarantees really that we will actually uh, get um, this element to fit exactly. So what we're going to do is just, again, roughly for now, you can actually work with it 
more in detail as well. I'm going to just copy by typing C enter. I'm going to do few, a bunch of these here and then maybe click on all of them and copy them again just to be quicker. Right? So very, very quickly you can just build some of these stairs, right? If I go ahead and then just select so, uh, some of these elements by pressing shift, I can type J enter to join them. So now we should have one long element and I'm going to move it to this point, right? So you can see that this is not fitting properly, right? So we can just go ahead and explode this guy. Say, okay, we're going to just end up here, right? I'm going to delete some of these elements that I don't need. I'm going to decide to just make that the right amount of stairs, right? So this is a, just a very quick way uh, to do this thing. I'm going to hide this image now. And I'm going to do some guidelines to actually scale this element back. I'm going to turn on S track. I can actually just give some guidelines for this element to say scale 1D. And this will allow me to scale down giving that reference. In this case we need perpendicular here. So what we did now is just scale this stair element to be exactly fitting on the on the ground here. The problem with that is that we actually um, we actually scaled up the uh, stairs not to 17 centimeters but slightly more. So uh, if you want to keep them to 17, um, that's up to you. You can you would start by defining um, the height that you want to get to, and then eventually work with the volume. Uh, so you can always move this ramp back and forth and then do some deformations to it. But for now, I think that it's it's uh, fairly close, so we're going to just leave it that, like that. And we're going to remove this element now and click on this there. And we're going to do extrude. Uh, but we're going to say both sides yes, just to make sure that we, we kind of go through. In case this surface has some curvature, uh, which would be totally fine. We will generate this element just larger in both sides and then trim it, right? So we have this there, um, and what I'm going to do now is just say trim, select cutting object will be this surface, right? Right click and select on the stair. So now it's being trimmed to the boundary of the surface. So if that surface is curved, that would be fine as well, right? Uh, we're going to type escape to finish that tool. And I'm going to right click to call the trimming uh, option again and select on this uh, surface here, right click and click on the stair again. Right? So now we can see that our stair element, uh, I'm going to type set enter S enter to just zoom and to select it. This stair element is fitting in the ground plane, zero. And going perfectly to our surface, and we don't have any details uh, or joints that might look uh, strange, right? Um, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and that's it for this lesson.